Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. In this tutorial video, I'll be showing you guys how to make a bootable USB using PowerShell. Now, this is going to be making a bootable USB of a Windows ISO, so either Windows 10, Windows 11, or any Windows server uh, will work as well. And this will work uh, specifically on UEFI machines. I'm specifying that just in case you might have an older machine that still uses legacy boot options. Those would be quite old at this point and would probably not really work well with the newer operating systems. If you're going out and buying a computer in the last couple of years or now, uh, most of them are going to be by default uh, set up to boot up with UEFI. Um, so this should work just fine for, I would say, 99% of uh, machines probably currently in use. And if you've modified your BIOS to use legacy boot options, just make sure that you would switch it back to UEFI for this video to work. Um, but let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So the first thing that we need to do in order to create a bootable USB using PowerShell is to launch a PowerShell in administrator mode. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. So we're just going to right click on it and click run as administrator. You could do this uh, perfectly fine in a PowerShell 7 console, in PowerShell 5.1 in the ISC. Uh, it will all work as long as you are in administrator uh, mode and you run as administrator. It should be perfectly fine. So the other thing that you're going to want to make sure that you have is a ISO of a Windows uh, server or Windows 11. And you're going to want to make sure that you actually have a USB plugged in. So I actually have a USB plugged into this computer right here. Um, and I have the ISO. Now, if you guys need a ISO uh, for Windows, uh, I'm going to be using Windows Server 2022. And this is because there will be some videos coming out where I show you guys how to install Windows Server 2022 on a laptop to make a home lab environment. Because uh, by default, installing a server OS on a laptop isn't that great. There are a lot of things that will not work right out of the box. So I'm going to make a video for you guys coming up uh, to show you guys that. And then we're going to be getting into some more Hyper-V setups. And also we're going to be looking at desired state configuration with PowerShell. So those are all videos to kind of look forward to. Uh, so this is just kind of the first video to at least get the environment set up, get that Windows server installed on a laptop. Uh, but first we're going to create that bootable USB. So um, you're just going to load in your favorite uh, search uh, search engine here and if you just type in Microsoft Server 2022 evaluation um, you will find uh, tons of links at the top here um, and you can just click on the first one it'll be like Windows Server 2022 Microsoft Evaluation Center now the evaluation is only valid for 180 days um, but as I've mentioned in previous videos you can actually reset that I believe up to six times uh, so it can actually last you a lot longer. So once you're on this page here, you're going to click on download the ISO. And all you need to do is fill out this information here and click on download now. And then you're going to be able to download the ISO here. I'm not going to fill it in because that will have sensitive information. Um, but you will get this ISO here, which is the server eval. And then I downloaded the 64-bit uh, version, which is the only version available, uh, and English US. Uh, so it basically gives you uh, tons of different countries options for the languages. Uh, you just select the one that you want. I just cho chose the English US version, uh, and there is only a 64-bit version available. Uh, so that should be good. So once you have all of that in downloaded on your computer, you have your PowerShell booted up in administrator mode, we can actually get started here. So the first thing that we actually want to do in PowerShell is find the USB disk that we are going to be putting our ISO on and creating that bootable uh, USB with. So the first thing that we're actually going to do is going to be a get disk commandlet. So if we actually just run this here, we will actually get our disks. Now, Sometimes this is a little bit difficult to see here. So let me just shrink this a little bit here. 
and we have our two disks. So we have our disk number zero and our disk number one. And if I actually just move to the side here, we will actually see that it is uh, almost a 500 gig and a just a 7.5 gig USB. Uh, so we know which one is actually our USB, but what you can actually do to make this even easier here is if we actually pipe this to a where dash object, and then we are just going to go ahead and do a set of curly brackets and do a dollar sign underscore dot uh, bus type and then equal USB. And we run this here. We will only get our USB, uh, which once again is our just our eight gig USB. So you will need at least an eight gigabyte USB for most of these images. Um, they will work, of course, if you have a 32 gig or anything like that, but a four gig or a one gig USB uh, will not be big enough uh, for the majority of images these days. There might still be a few OSs that might fit um, on a smaller uh, USB stick, but the eight gig would definitely be the safest bet. So then once we know what our disk number is, what we actually want to do is actually create a variable called disk. And we're going to make that equal to get disk and we're going to pipe that to where object number is equal to one and if we actually run this here now our disk is actually set to our eight gigabyte usb and then what we want to first do is we want to format this usb uh one we want to clear all the information off of it then we want to set it the partition style to a GPT partition. This will make it work with our UEFI uh, machines. And then we're going to create a new partition and we're going to create an NTFS partition because the uh, Windows Server 2022, the files are actually bigger than four gigs. So if you do a FAT32, you would actually have to split the installed.wim file uh, which I don't really want to do. I'd rather just use NTFS. Of course, this will reduce the compatibility to work with systems. But because it is a Windows Server ISO, we're going to be installing it directly on a machine. Uh, this doesn't really matter. NTFS is completely usable. So let's go ahead and let's clear this disk here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our disk and we're going to pipe this to clear disk. And we are going to pipe it to remove data. We are going to remove the OEM. And we are going to actually put the confirm to false here. So it doesn't actually make us do anything. And if we go ahead and we run this, this will clear the disk. And now if we actually look for our disk, you will see it's actually not there anymore. We actually don't see our USB in our Windows Explorer. But that is quite okay because what we're going to do now is we're going to do we're going to take our disk we're going to pipe that to a set disk partition style we're going to set that to gpt and we are going to run this here and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new partition so what we actually want to do is we want to create a new variable called drive because this is going to give us a a return value and we're going to make that equal to our disk pipe that to a new partition and we're going to do a use maximum size so you can specify a size uh, but at that point if you're using an 8 gig stick you're going to try specifying the size of 8 gig chances are your usb is not actually 8 gigs it's probably more like seven and a half or so and you're going to get an error or you'll assign it seven gigs and you're actually losing space on your USB that way. I prefer to use the use maximum size. Now, of course, if you have a big USB, like a 32 gig USB, and you want to put multiple uh, bootable ISOs on here, definitely you're going to want to specify a size and create some partitions that way. Or if you just want to make one part of the USB bootable, uh, and then the other part to contain files, you can do that as well. But we're going to use the maximum size and we are going to assign the drive letter automatically. 
And if we actually run this here, and we look at our drive variable, so here it is, it is now assigned to the drive letter D. So if we actually look it up here, we can actually see our USB drive and we can see the letter D. And then the only thing that left to do here to format it is going to be, we're going to take the drive here and we're going to pipe that to format dash volume. And we're going to do the file system as NTFS. And we're going to do a new file system label. And we're just going to put that to PS bootable for PowerShell bootable here. And if we run this here. This sometimes takes a little bit. All right, it is all done. So now we can actually see our drive name is now PS bootable. We still don't have anything on there because we haven't copied or done anything to it. So now the only thing that's left to do is to mount our ISO and then create that bootable partition and then copying all the files over. So what we now want to do is do a mount disk image. And our image path is going to be our ISO file. So here for me, I actually have it directly in the C drive here. So if I go in C, ISO, I have this ISO file here. So I'm just going to shift right click and copy path and paste that in there. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to mount this disk image. And now if you look at your Windows Explorer, you will actually see now we have a DVD drive E. We actually have that ISO mounted here. Then what we're going to do is for our script here, what we need to do is we need to do a get volume and then pipe that to where object drive type is equal to CD-ROM. Now, you don't have to do this. If you just look at the file explorer, you could get the drive letter directly from there. Uh, but I like to just do it if you were just using PowerShell. So if we do a get volume where the object drive type is equal to CD-ROM, we can actually see our CD here, which is in the E drive. We can see the name of the ISO. So what we can actually do now is do an ISO drive is equal to uh, get volume where object drive letter is equal to E. And if we run this here and we look at our ISO drive, we will see that it is equal to our drive letter here E. So everything is good there. And then all we need to do is do a set location and our path for the location here that we want to do. It's going to be inside of double quotes and we're going to put our variable wrapper in here and we're going to put a ISO drive dot drive letter and then outside of the parentheses here we're going to do a colon backslash boot and then all we need to do is then do a boot sec dot exe slash forward slash nt60 and we're going to do a, another set of double quotes here. We're going to do a variable wrapper. We are going to do a drive dot drive letter and the colon. So what this does here is we are setting the location to our script to our ISO boot. Uh, so if we actually go ahead and we go in our ISO here, go inside boot, we can actually see this boot sec dot exe which is really what lets us create this bootable USB. And then the boot sec, we specify our USB drive letter to create that USB as a bootable USB. So if we actually run these two things here, we will see boot code was successfully updated on all targeted volumes. So everything is good here. And then all we need to do is then do a copy item and we're going to do a path here. And then this path, we are going to need to put in our ISO. So we're going to do ISO drive dot drive letter. 
and we are going to put a colon backslash star and then our destination is once again going to be inside double quotes we're going to put in our drive dot drive letter here and we're going to put a colon here and we're going to want to make sure that we do a recurse now what i also like to do is add the verbose to actually see all the files that it's copying over and this way you kind of just know a little bit more of when it's done and if it's still doing something but we can actually run this here now this can sometimes take quite a few minutes so i'm going to go ahead and pause the recording we're going to come back when it's done and we just have one more commandlet to put in and then we can actually test out our usb so i will just pause that now and i'll see you in a few minutes all right so the copy is all done here we are now back at a little screen um, at our command prompt here. So now what we can actually do is do a dismount dash disk image here. And we can do the image path and we can actually just put in that same path here from our C drive ISO that we specified in the mount. So once we actually do that, it actually dismounts that um, ISO. So now we are actually good to go and we can actually take the USB out of our computer here and put it into our laptop. And I'll show you guys how that actually boots up here. So let me actually just switch screens here on the recording and there it is. So we won't be going over the install of server 2022 today. Um, but this will actually just show you guys that it does boot and just show you guys that everything is working correctly. Uh, so once you have your computer here, I'm just going to turn mine off completely and we are going to turn it back on. So once you turn it uh, on here, what you're going to need to do is once I can actually have it completely turn off. Uh, so when you do turn on your computer, you're going to want to make sure that you go into the one-time boot menu. On some computers, that is F2. On some computers, it is F12. Uh, but you're going to want to make sure that you know how to boot into your uh, boot menu here. And you're going to have a lot of different options. All right, so I was actually able to get the capture card here on the laptop. So once you boot into your boot menu here, this is what you're going to see. These are the options for the Ethernet, and then these are the options for the boot manager here. And you are going to want to select the UEFI. And then once we actually go in there, I'm going to put in the my BIOS password, and it's going to load up the files from your USB. So it should already be working for you guys. So once this is actually done, we're going to get into a Windows Server uh, installation screen, and that's where we're going to end it for today. We're going to go through the entire setup on a laptop on a separate video, um, but let's just let this actually load in to the installation of Windows Server. So here we actually do have it here. We can actually see the Windows Server is actually uh, booting up into our installation. So here we can actually go through this. We're going to go through this entirely on a separate video so you guys will have your Wi-Fi working on your laptop. That is usually the big problem with installing server OSs on a laptop is usually the Wi-Fi uh, does not really work properly. So we're going to actually take a look at that in the next video. And we're going to be taking a look at some Hyper-V setups and some desired state configuration PowerShell very, very soon. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And if you guys have any comments or questions on this video, please let me know down below in the comment section. I will do my best to answer all of you guys directly. If it's something that can benefit a lot of people, I will make a video on it as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.